I want to just bring a simple word of uh, encouragement this morning uh, and just remind us that we are in the church's finest hour. And so we are going from glory to glory. And so where we are today is the finest moment where the church has ever been. And it's only going to get better. The first 400 years, the church was born on the day of Pentecost, somewhere around AD 30. And from that time, the first 400 years were powerful years. And, the, and, and in the first 400 years, the church grew and uh, extended and, and uh, reached out to the then known world. But what we see thereafter is that once the Roman Emperor Constantine Constantine embraced the Christian faith and he began to get actively involved while it was good on one side because the state now favored the Christian faith it also was a big problem or uh, it just caused the church to go into uh, this what we commonly refer to as the dark ages the church became institutionalized a lot of things were driven from you know, from a uh, civil side into the religious side, a lot of things are institutionalized, and the church began to pursue more of things that were of ritual in nature. Uh, a lot of corrupt things came into the church, and thereafter, we see this was around, around 1500s, we see God taking the church through a process of reformation, restoration, and revival. So in the 1500s was the revelation of salvation by faith. In the 1600s, there was the, uh, the, the understanding of uh, the importance of water baptism. The 1700s, often referred to as the Puritan movement with John and Charles Wesley. And uh, uh, 1700s and the 1800s were the years of revival. At the beginning of the 1900s, we have the, the birth of the Pentecostal movement. So in the last 500 years, God, you know, a church that was in darkness for a period of 1,000 years, within 500 years, God has brought the church out from a place of being a weak and feeble entity to being a powerful force on the earth. Amen. Today, almost in every part of the globe, you have spirit-filled churches, and we are in the finest hour of the church. So if you look into these scriptures, we see that our four main things, God is working in the church. Number one, and you look at Ephesians chapter 4, He's placed the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist for the equipping of the saints. The saints are to be equipped to do the work of the ministry. So the fivefold ministry is given to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. God wants to work through you. He wants to do something through you. Number one. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Number two. And to the knowledge of the Son of God. Number three. Till we all come to a mature man, a perfect man. To the full measure of the stature of Christ. And number four. This is in chapter 5, Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. The fifth thing, that he's, the fourth thing that God is doing is bringing the church to be a, into a place where it is without spot or wrinkle, a glorious church that is holy and set apart for Him. Because Jesus is not coming back for a weak and feeble church. He's coming back for a glorious church. Amen? So get ready. Get ready for that. The beautiful thing is we get to be a part of what God is doing. You know, what a joy to be living in the church's finest hour. And you and I get to be a part of God fulfilling these four things right here on earth. When everybody says it's impossible, God is working right through you and me to make this happen. The church will come to this place of being united in faith. The church will come to this place of knowing Jesus for who he really is. The church will come to this place where we can all grow up to the full measure of the stature of Christ. The church will come to this place where we will be a glorious church radiating and manifesting the glory of God here on earth. 
And God will do it.